I want you to turn in your Bible just for, you got Bibles? You, anyone use a Bible anymore? <laughs> Who actually bought a physical Bible today? No one. One. They're all people over 50. All right. You can't, you can't mark your telephone. You can't mark it. You can't get white out on it change it and write little things in the column. Oh, you can there. All right, you can. Fair enough. No worries. Did you have a nice night last night? Did you make a noise? All right. Gee, you're very quiet. You're worn out, are you? If you're alive, turn to the person next to you and say, I'm ready for action this year. One Peter. Chapter 1, verse 13 reads like this. Wherefore, gird up the loins of your mind, be sober and hope to the end, etc. Here, just want to get this first part. Wherefore, gird up the loins of your mind. Father, would you take hold of your word this morning? Let it be with power, let it be with an anointing. And I pray that you'd touch us today. Stir us and impact us in Jesus' name. Everybody said. Amen. Wherefore, gird up the loins of your mind. Interesting piece of scripture. It, uh, when it says wherefore, you've got to go and have a look and see what the wherefore is there for. But if you go back, it talks about something extraordinary that has happened to you and I. It talks about the thing which the prophets sought after and inquired diligently into without knowing what was coming, just with ideas, just with prophecies, just with thoughts. And they inquired about this enormous thing that we have called salvation and the gift of salvation, new life. And it is ascribed here that Paul talks about it being with so much power your salvation and mine, and the thing that has happened to you and I is so powerful and so extreme that even the angels of heaven long to gaze into it. They are longing, and the word there is a very powerful word. It's almost like uh, uh, an intense lusting to look into and know the mystery of the thing that God is doing with you and I. And so if it's so great, and what we've experienced is of such significance, it says, wherefore, or as a result, gird up the loins of your mind. That's an interesting piece of scripture. We'll go into it a bit further in detail. To gird up literally means to bind as with a belt anew. It means if a man, and in the, the ancient days they wore robes, when you had to run or you had to go into battle or something was happening, action was about to happen, you had to run for something or someone was attacking you, you girded up the loins by pulling up that robe and tucking it into your belt so that you could run. It is about action. It is about running into something. It is about going after something. And God says, because of the salvation we have, let us gird up the loins and tuck into our belt, anything that would restrict us. The Bible says, wherefore, seeing we are gathered about by so great a cloud of witnesses in the book of Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which does so easily beset us and let us then run with endurance the race that has been set before us, looking unto Jesus, who is the author and the finisher of our faith. You know, there is a battle, the greatest place that we have to win in 2017 is in here. There are Christians in church every week all over the world that worship God and love God, but they are controlled in their mind by fear, doubt, and everything else that the enemy can throw at them. There's not a high percentage of Christians who've broken through in their mind. I think it is a continual battle. I know for me, the greatest battle I have it's not with people. I, I don't even mind confrontation with people. I sort of... <laughs> it 
Moving on. I, uh, the greatest battle for me is a battle in here. Greatest battle is for me to be in control under the hand of God, not under the dominance of thoughts that come to hold you down, restrict you, and cease you, and try to stop you living in a place of triumphant victory and impact for the kingdom. You see, we, every one of us are involved in a, in a battle for the mind. Now, I preached on this last year. I preached from 2 Corinthians chapter 10, uh, verse 3 and 4. Though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, natural, but divinely powerful through God to the pulling down of strongholds. And I talked about strongholds in the mind. Then the scripture says we have mighty weapons. How many are glad we've got mighty weapons? To the pulling down, and that word means to bring to extinction strongholds. We are destroying speculations, reasonings, high thoughts, and every lofty thing that is raised against the knowledge of God, and we're bringing every thought captive unto the obedience of Christ. Satan's great skill, and I don't want to give him airplay today, Very interesting, the name the devil is the word in the scripture, diabolus. And uh, it comes from two words, but the second part of that word, bolus, means to throw. Diabolus, diabolus, means to throw, to throw a ball, to throw something. But in the ancient Greek, going back, it literally means to throw a net. He is the net thrower. His aim is to throw a net of control of the mind to bring a whole generation into his net and draw them where he wants them to go. The Bible says in the book of Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 10, it says, Be strong, be endued with excessive power, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. I've already preached on that previously here. Put on the whole armor of God, the panoply of the full weaponry of God, that you may stand against, the word against is the word pros, and that word pros is a defiant, militant stand that leans into the face of the opposition. That you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Wiles is the Greek word methodia, methodius. And it's the word from which we get method, Wiles, strategies, trickery, mind games, but it also means to build a road. Put on the whole armour of God that you may stand unstoppable against the road building, methods, trickery, and every satanic thing against your mind. He wants to build a road into people's minds. I see Christians that love Jesus, but they leave the door open to their mind So that Satan is able, even though they love him, love God, they leave the door open that Satan can come in with an open door into their mind through attitudes, things they do, things they watch, things they listen to and begin to exercise control. That's why we put on the helmet of salvation. The Bible says, because we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, powers, rulers, wicked spirits. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor. Now, I'm not going there today except to say this. We wrestle. We're in a wrestling match. And the wrestling is to take the dominant control of our mind. Satan's power is in influence. His aim is to take the control of the mind and bring us, like a wrestling match, into a place where we give up or we lose heart, we lose confidence or we just feel even though we love Jesus, we are unable to make an impact, make a mark. We don't matter. We can't do it. His aim is to wrestle and get control. But my Bible says we are the head, not the tail. We are above only, never below. We are, if by, if through one man's death sin reigns, how much more? I'm spinning and going fast. If through one man's death sin reigns, how much more shall we who have received the gift of righteousness reign 
Basileus, rule in kingly dominion by one Christ Jesus. Mind control, and I've, uh, I'm silly enough to study half these things and try and find out everything I can. I don't want to go too much with this, but the mind control on a global scale has always been there. Satan is a mind controller. But since the 60s, mind control accelerated at a rate that is beyond words. I was, and I've touched this briefly, I'll touch it again. I was a very big Beatles fan, and some of you, your parents were, and there's people here that probably still listen to the Beatles. They started off with nice ballads like in the 60s, 1963, 64, I Want to Hold Your Hand, Love Me Do. Uh, beautiful love ballads, they all sounded great, and they made a great sound. But something happened with the Beatles where the youth of the world virtually en masse embraced them. It was Beatlemania. In Adelaide alone, we were living in Adelaide, uh, a city of a million people. When they left Adelaide, 300,000, a third of the population, lined the streets of the city to the airport to say goodbye to them. One third of Adelaide came out to see them. Their popularity was so huge that at one stage they came to the point John Lennon said, we're now more popular than Jesus Christ. He wasn't actually saying uh, that he was, but he declared the popularity. The Beatles started off there, and the world followed them, and we went on a journey with them. I went on a journey with them in their music, loved their music, followed where they were going. But they began to move further, and they, they wanted to experiment, and they were introduced to drugs. They got into... Uh, an interesting drug called lysergic acid diethyl, diethylamide, LSD or acid. First acid trip was given by their dentist. And as they got home to George Harrison's place, John said, your whole house is floating like a great submarine and we're all driving a great submarine. And you might remember if you're old enough, one of their albums, or one of their uh, albums, we all live in a yellow submarine. Um, and our friends are all aboard. Da, 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 da. We all live in a yellow so I don't live in a yellow submarine. But they went into acid. John Lennon particularly went into acid to such a degree that it was estimated that he'd taken over a thousand acid trips. They then went into Eastern philosophy. They went deeper and deeper. Their music became more and more inspired. Uh, and at the end, it really became quite weird. If you followed them right through to the end, their music by the end had degenerated into a... a a confused situation that was deeply acid driven. They went off into Eastern philosophy, but they took the world with them. They took the youth of the world with them. And then there was all, some of the stuff that, as I've been studying and going into a whole lot of the stuff on the, the mind control of a generation, I found that they ventured into the Egyptian Book of the Dead and all sorts of occult writings. In fact, on the, on the front of their, their album, um, Sergeant Peppers, they put all their friends there, and among their friends were Karl Marx and, and Alistair Crowley, the, called the Beast 666, claimed to be the most evil man that ever lived. And a number of musicians around the world, we could name probably quite a number, uh, took the philosophy, total satanic philosophy, and the music began to manipulate, and still does. There's a whole generation that are controlled by the... Um, the prophets of the age of music and media begin to take control of the mind of the generation. Whether we like it or not, almost everything is pulled and controlled by the media. And the church worldwide is having a massive problem trying to remain in a place where we're loyal to the word of God when the circumstance of the world and the opinion of the world in so many areas is pulling like a great magnet to drag the world in a particular direction. Satan throws out his net. Diabolus throws the net to bring control of the mind. But what does God say to us? And I'm going to come back to that scripture in a few minutes from the beginning. What is God saying to us? In the book of Romans chapter 12 verse 1, it says, Brethren, I, I beseech you or beg you by the mercies of God, that you present your body a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service of worship. And it goes on in chapter 2 and it says, Be not conformed to this world. Do not allow the world 
to shape you. It says, do not be, this is Romans 12 too, if you're following me or taking notes. Do not be conformed to this world. The word for world there is eon, which is age. Don't be conformed to this age. Don't let this age shape you. Don't be shaped by its music. Don't be shaped by the lies that have been pumped into a generation from a lot of reprobate minds that have had huge influence. The Bible says, but be ye transformed. It's a powerful word, transformed. It's the Greek word metamorpho. And it means to be changed. In fact, when Jesus was transfigured, it's the word metamorpho. Changed from one form to another. Like a grub in a cocoon that after a period of time breaks out of the cocoon and becomes a butterfly. Don't be conformed, but be transformed. Have a metamorphosis. Standing. The word renewing is the word to be made new, a renovation. God says, don't let the world conform you. Don't let what's said in the newspaper conform you. I've got a better newspaper here. It's prophetic. Don't let the world dictate how you think. Don't be controlled by the world's views on morality. What's happening in parts of the world where the media will tell you what they want to tell you. I want to stick with what the Bible tells me. Don't be conformed to this world, but be transformed, metamorpho, by the absolute renewal, the renovation of your thinking, of your understanding. It's powerful. Ephesians 4.23 says, be renewed or renovated in the spirit of your mind. I preached on this previously. I think if you indulge and let the world have too much influence, you get a spirit of the world over your mind. And then your thinking will be filtered by worldviews. We've got to be, I think, I think God, I believe God spoke to me about where the, the body of Christ is right now on the planet. And I felt the Lord say there's two things that have to come back in the body of Christ. Two things that have to come with a rush in the body of Christ. One of them is holiness. Escape from compromise. And number two, we're venturing into a place of power like we've never seen before. The Bible says, be transformed by the renewing of your mind. I love what Jesus, see, a lot of people say, when you start talking about the mind, you're talking new age. No, I'm talking old age, Jesus, the Bible. Scripture says, thou shalt love the Lord with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength. That word ishkus is every forcible thing within you and with all your mind. And the word there is dianoia, which is the deepest thinking of your mind, the deepest contemplation, the deepest dreaming. That deep, See, there's the mind here that is talking about the renewing of your mind. That's your intellect and your thinking. <coughs> but the Bible says you're going to love the Lord with the deepest understanding of your thinking. Jesus said, you'll love the Lord God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, and all your dianoia. God says, Paul wrote to Timothy and said, Timothy, don't let world events worry you. Don't let what's going on in the world worry you. Don't let the persecution that's coming, don't let these things worry you. For God has not given you, Timothy, a spirit of fear, but he's given you a spirit of power, Love and a sound mind. You see, what God wants us to have right now is a sound, mature, confident, secure, settled mind. A mind set on Christ. A mind set on the things of God. Who gives a monkeys what's happening on the planet right now? Our role is to set our mind on him. Who cares what's happening with Russia? Who cares what's going on? We need to care, yes, and pray but not be defeated and go, it's all coming to the end. We need to, let me just track back and say, I am concerned about what's happening. I am concerned at the stuff that's happening with uh, 
Syria, the stuff that's happening around the world. We've got to be concerned about it, but not lose any sleep. Work out what we can do. And one of the things we don't want to do is worry. If we can help situations, let's do it. If we can actively involve in stuff and help around the world in the pain of the world, great. But we have a role. We have a role to be totally steadfast in Christ, not worrying, not caring. Paul, when he was ready to die, said, I've run the race, I've fought the fight, everybody's left me, it doesn't matter. But Jesus came and stood by me last night and strengthened me. In fact, he said, I'm ready to go. I fought the fight, I don't care what happens, I'm ready to go. I know whom I have believed. I know, I'm steadfast, I'm solid in my thinking. The Bible says, have the, have the mind of Christ. We need to have a revolution in the spirit. Oh, wow, that was a good voice. In the, I think I might have lost a page of scripture. That'll save you some time. The Bible, let's go back to original scripture. I've got eight minutes. The Bible says, because we have this mighty salvation, because we have been brought into something so powerful, you and I have been invited in to something that even the angels don't even understand. It's too mighty. We think about the power of the angelic host. We've been invited into something so mighty that they long to gaze into it. People want to see angels. People say, I want to see angels. No, the angels want to see what God is going to do through you. And so... What do we do? Be not conformed to the world, but be transformed by the renewing of our mind in order that we might prove the good and acceptable and perfect will of God. How do we find the perfect will of God? I think it starts in the mind. 1 Corinthians 10 says, take every thought captive. We can decide how we're going to think. Whether we're going to think defeat or we're going to think victory. Whether we're going to think what the world says or what the Bible says. Whether we're going to think about ourselves by what we feel about ourselves or what the Bible says about us. Don't be conformed to this world system. Don't be conformed to this age. But transfigured. Metamorpho by the utter renovation of your mind. But this scripture becomes very powerful. It says, gird up, gird up, lift your robes and tuck them in your belt and get ready to run because we're running into the greatest year that Planet Shakers has ever known. We're running into stuff we never dreamed. I mean, we are running into a move of God like we can't imagine. I mean, we're running into creative stuff in business. We're running into stuff in finance. We're running into stuff in our thinking. We're running into a new dimension in 2017. So the Bible says, gird up the loins of your mind. Well, I didn't know my mind had loins. I didn't know. What are loins? Loins speak of the procreative part of our anatomy. So what's it saying? Or what can I read into it? Or what can I do with it in terms of a little bit of uh, gymnastics? Let us gird up the incredible dimension of the procreative dreaming and thinking Let us gird up our loins to begin to think the God thoughts, to get into a place with God out there praying, seeking him, waiting, fasting, where God can begin to say, I have thoughts for you. I've got plans for you. I've got dreams for you. I want to exceed. He said, I want to do exceedingly abundantly beyond anything that you could ask or think or dream or imagine. I can do exceedingly abundantly beyond anything in your dear noia, your deep thought, the faculty of your mind, your imagination, your understanding. It says we want to have success in 17. Then we need to have a revolution in our thinking. Taking old thoughts captive. 
Too many Christians are dominated by old thinking that holds them down, keeps them down, and year after year, they do nothing because they're held down, not by people, but by their own mind. We need to get before God and say, Father, take me into a new place in my thinking. Take me into a creative place. Stir up the procreative, life-giving ideas, imaginations for my job. For the impact on the world. How do we, how do we, how do we gird up the loins of our mind? Well, one of the great ways the Bible talks about uh, in Ephesians chapter 5, verse 26, our mind washed with the water of the word. The more we feed this in, the media will take us one way. This book will take us into our destiny. Relative thinking will take us there. The world's opinions will take us there. But God says, be transfigured in the absolute renovation of your mind. Don't let the world's music dictate what you think. Don't let the media, don't even let the news only tell you what they want to tell you anyway. We have to make choices. Choices. I love what Barry Maguire said, and most of you are too young to remember Barry Maguire, but he sang a song called uh, The Eve of Destruction, and then he got saved. And he wrote another one. And you tell me over and over and over and over again, my friend, you don't believe we're on the dawn. You'd remember that, Kev. And he got dramatically saved from drugs and everything else. And he was caught up in that whole thing with end of destruction. You're on the eve of destruction. He got saved. And he's cha- same, same song, but he changed it to the dawn of correction. But they came to him and they said, Barry, you've been brainwashed. You're brainwashed. That's what's going on. And he said, well, I was before, but now I've chosen who can wash my brain clean. The world wants to brainwash us, take us on a journey. But God says, I've got a greater journey for you. But don't be conformed to this world. Be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you might prove what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God. God's got plans for you this year that are beyond your wildest dreams. The first place we need to have the victory is in our mind. So what about in our spirit? We're born again down here. But just like when the temple was rebuilt, was rebuilt in Jerusalem, Ezra came back, re- was rebuilding the temple. But the walls were knocked down. And the enemy had access through the walls. And he kept coming in through the walls. Until finally, the walls were rebuilt. But you know, Nehemiah came in. Speaks of the comforter. Read the name of the comforter. Nehemiah came and rebuilt the walls. And the, then the enemy was kept out. But too many Christians have a place of worship in here. But you've got to start to rebuild in here. And it means you've got to start to take the old thoughts captive and get in this word and determine who, not what somebody's told you all your life you are but who God says you are and what you can do and the impossible things he can achieve with you. This is your day and mine. Well, thanks for joining us today and you can connect with us at Planet Shakers Online and uh, I trust you have enjoyed and been helped by the message.